Hey guys, it's Mackenzie. Welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to kind of make a follow-up to my last video, the day in my reseller life, specifically the end, towards the end, where I talk about the USPS, the post office, where I was having a lot of difficulty. That was, let's see, was that last week? I think that was a couple weeks ago. And I did end up putting in a complaint with USPS. I went on the website and I just typed everything out. I wrote a whole lot about, you know, exactly what I was saying and how I'm how I've just been having you know a really hard time there I talked about how the postmaster has just been giving me trouble for you know having so many packages I think the reason so another thing I was really overwhelmed in a good way by all the comments that I got on my last video that was really nice it was very reassuring and validating to hear from all of you that you know basically I'm not doing anything wrong which I kind of just wanted to double check because you know I mentioned in the video that I'm not great with conflict and by that I really meant I'm not great with problems that I can't see a solution to like I, or I don't know the origin of the problem like I really just could not see what this conflict was coming from and if it was on my end or not. I, I knew that it wasn't, but you know, it's nice to just double check and get that uh, validation. And you guys really just kind of had my back on that. So I did read every comment. I haven't responded to a lot of them just because there were so many, but I did want to, you know, just kind of follow up and say thank you guys so much for, you know, caring and supporting me. I did, so I did put in the complaint and I did hear back and basically a representative from the complaints and inquiry clerk, CLK, I guess that's clerk, said we spoke to blank, the name of the postmaster, and as long as you wait in line, you will receive a receipt for prepaid packages. So that's the part that they kind of typed out and then there's, you know, a lot of just kind of automated stuff like you know please accept our sincere apology blah 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 that's all kind of automated stuff and so it sounds like they did talk to him and they got it worked out I'm just glad that you know I was specifically mentioned so that they're aware that you know <laughs> I'm having issues and I'm upset about it so yeah I, I think this is good I didn't want to you know have a whole big confrontation and you know be rude myself I I really don't think it's good to be rude to someone when they're rude to you um, that's just not what I do and so I'm happy with how it was handled and today you know I went took my packages and the clerks were you know not very cordial they're never cordial they don't greet you when you walk in they don't you know they're just very very rude there a lot of the google reviews say they call the clerks heartless at this specific location and say you know that um, one person specifically said i feel like a bother going in there which is exactly how i feel and i know a lot of you guys were saying well why don't you just go to a different post office long story short my parents house which is where i am now this is where i ship this is where i have my inventory is in a small suburb off of Houston, outside of Houston, and so um, it's really the only post office on the way to my house. I would have to go 20 or 30 minutes out of my way to go to a different one, and with filming the Ship With Me videos like I do, that's just really not feasible for me. That's pretty much the only post office I can that's in the area that I can go to, and also package pickups. I'm I only ship twice a week generally sometimes I will ship three times if it's a big shipping week but I generally only ship twice a week and so I need the stuff to go out that day and so you know I need to ship that day I can't do a package pickup the, the following day um, and also you know I'd have to have my parents put the stuff outside and I don't really want to ask them to do that that's it, it's a lot of packages usually so you know I wouldn't want to ask them to do that and uh, you know there's also the issue of me not being there to monitor them until they get picked up so that's a whole other thing so yeah I mean it's it's really my only option and as long as 
you know, I don't care if they're rude to me. I don't care if they ignore me or whatever. Just as long as they're not going out of their way to give me a hard time and say things to me. And But, you know, next time, if it happens, I'm just going to ask what their name is and I'll just file another complaint um, for whoever it is. I'm definitely not, you know, afraid to do that or anything. I think that like a lot of you were saying, that's not right. That's not, you know, they shouldn't be treating not only customers, but people like that. I mean, that's no way to treat someone to just be so incredibly rude to them just because you're creating a little bit more work for them with the job that they signed up for, that they're employed with. So it's all very ridiculous and I'm glad that it seems to be handled for now. I will keep you guys updated if there are any more updates. Hopefully there are not. Okay, now I'm going to quickly run through my weekend sales with you guys, show you what sold and what my profit on each item was. So first item to sell is actually over here. It is this pair of clogs, Swedish clogs from Lada's from Stockholm is the brand and these sold for $30. That made my earnings $24. I did pay $2 so my net profit was $22 on those. Next, going back over here, we have this Forever 21 dainty feminine floral dress. I normally do not pick up Forever 21 but this is their older tag and their older stuff is a little bit better quality. I would say this is more comparable to like a Topshop kind of quality and I marketed it this as a 90s style, uh, you know, dainty ruffle kind of slim dress. Very feminine, flattering. So I, you know, added all the keywords. It sold for $15 full price. So my net profit was $10 on this. Next is, going back to shoes, this pair of Vince Camuto. This is Signature by Vince Camuto. It has this large buckle here. I got this in my Jomar wholesale box with uh, 20 pairs of shoes. And these sold for 30. My earnings were 24. I did pay $5 for each pair of shoes. So I made $19 on these shoes. Our next sale is this bundle of Parachute Home items. This is a blush colored linen duvet cover. And then this is the blush colored King Sham set. And that sold in a bundle for $165. My net earnings were $132. I probably paid about $12. And so my net profit was $120 on that bundle. That's one of my, I think that's my last duvet cover to sell. So very exciting on that. Moving back over here, we sold this Cynthia Ashby uh, kind of tunic dress. And this is definitely a brand to look out for. I know you guys hear me talk about lag and look styles very often. And this piece embodies what lag and look is. It's just very... Um, you know, you could layer under this. You could have like a tank top under with some kind of billowy pants. It's just very kind of artsy and just a really cool piece. So a couple reasons why this particular piece from this brand did not sell super well. It sat for a little bit. First off, it's a size small with lag and look and more kind of artsy pieces large to plus size will always do better in this style. It also does have a few spots throughout the piece. And so I ended up sending out an offer on this for $35, which was accepted. My net earnings were $25.50. I paid $2. So my net profit was $23.50 on this piece. Next, going back over here to shoes. I sold this pair of Steve Madden boots. They're called the Yale boots. They're in excellent condition. This heel here is looks brand new. And these sold for $30. My earnings were $24, so my net profit was $22 on those. 
Next is this Lululemon sports bra that I grabbed from the bins. It still has the padding, which is great. That's kind of rare with Lululemon stuff. It's super strappy in back. And this sold for, again, I sent an offer out on this for $25, dis discounted shipping. It ended up being accepted. My net earnings were $17.50. I probably paid a dollar for this, so my net profit was $16.50. Next up, we have this jacket. This is so cool. Um, my mom actually had this jacket in her to list pile for a long time. And then she ended up, uh, she was going to send it off to Goodwill to donate. And I was like, mom, what are you doing? I need that. I want to list that. That is so cool. The brand is Sandy Starkman, size large. And so I listed it. It did sit for, I would say three months or so. Um, but I added all the keywords, art to wear, patchwork, vibrant, embroidered, and it did get some interest and it ended up selling Offer to Liker for $38 with discounted shipping. So I made $27.94 on this jacket. So thanks mom for that. And lastly, actually not lastly, Second to last, we have this pair of sandals. The brand is, let me see, um, Popolva, I believe that's what that says. I ordered these off of ThreadUp. They were listed under assorted brands, but I could see that they were genuine leather handmade, and so I grabbed them. They're amazing quality. These sold for $25. My earnings were $20. I think I paid about $6, so $14 on those. And now, lastly, is this Alice and Olivia wool blend striped sweater. Also grabbed this from the bins. Um, and this sold for $25. Someone sent me an offer for $20. I countered to $25. So my net profit on this was about 19. So that is it for my weekend slash Monday sales. It was kind of slow this weekend for sure, but that's fine. I really haven't been listing that much. I have so much to list. I have, yeah, I have a lot of unlisted inventory right now, so I'm not too worried about my slow sales. They always pick up when I list more. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and package these up now. Alrighty, just finished packaging. Gonna run these down. Also, something that I wanted to chat about. So I have these boots, and I ordered these boots off of ThreadUp within their assorted brands slash unbranded items category. They were listed without a brand, basically. And they came in, turns out their retail price is over $1,000. I paid $28 or $29 for them. They are in amazing condition, basically, I mean, close to like new condition. So that was a huge score and I did order some other items. I'm curious, let me know in the comments down below if you guys would be interested in seeing a video where I kind of walk you through the ThreadUp website and how I shop for assorted brands, unbranded items. I know Nicole State just did a video on it. It's really good. I highly suggest you go check it out. I do have, I, I hadn't sourced from their website the way that she does, so that was really interesting to me. I do have a different method with how I do it, so if you guys are interested, like I said, let me know. My thread up videos aren't as popular as my other ones, so I am curious, you know, if you guys would like to see that. It's totally fine if you don't. That's it's just something, you know, I like to make content that caters to you guys. So yeah, let me know on that. And then so it's currently 442. I was planning on filming a haul video, but I'm not really in the mood, honestly. I I kind of want to go sourcing. I think I'm going to head over to Goodwill just for a couple hours and see what I can find. So I'll try to include a haul at the end of this video. Hi again. So today is Friday. I think I was last filming on Tuesday, so it's obviously been a couple days. I think I ended the video talking about wanting to go thrifting that evening, which I did end up doing. I went to a regular Goodwill and a regular, regularly priced Goodwill and Family Thrift 
center store and I found 12 items. And today is really the first chance I've had to film a thrift haul. I have been busy the past couple days. I got a haircut, as I'm sure you can tell. And yeah, I wanted to close out the video on kind of a fun note with a thrift haul. So like I said, I picked up 12 items. I spent $85.41 total, making my net, or sorry, my average cost of goods on each item $7.12. So let's go ahead and start off with the one pair of shoes that I found. These are Madewell and they are a leather clog mule, kind of like an almond toe. I would say, and they're in really good shape. This is the back heel, a stacked back heel, and the size is eight and a half. They're from fall of 2019. Now into our clothing pieces. I have not seen this stuff. Sorry guys, it is fresh out of the thrift, thrift store bag. First off, this is a very exciting find for me. These are Reformation, which I really, do not find very often in my area. I think this is only like the third time I've ever found it in the last five years. And they have the other two items were super basic. So the fact that these are a more substantial piece, this is very true to the Reformation brand. There's these little ties at the ankle. They're a paper bag, high waist and they are 100% linen. So these are right on season linen of no brand flies out of my closet. So the fact that these are linen from Reformation and they're also an adorable style, I think these will do so well. I'm expecting 75 to 95 from these and they are a size four. Next piece is this helmet Lang maxi dress this is gorgeous let me see if i can get it to focus on the dress so it kind of has this draped neckline and then at the waist there's a little bit of a crossover flattering uh, detail here and then as you go into the leg portion of the dress there is a pretty high slit so this is very, very flattering. It's that material that's kind of thick and stretchy and it has a cutout in back. So I'm very excited about this. This is an amazing piece from Helmet Lang. Again, a little bit more substantial with the maxi length and you know, it is more of a formal dress. So very happy with that. Next we have Athleta joggers and these I, so if it's Athleta and I'm paying more than a couple dollars for it, I will always look up the style number on the inside tag. I was about to put these back, but I quickly just typed in Athleta and then the style number that is on pretty much every tag. Let me see if this will focus here. Might be too bright. But yeah, it's that top little number there. It says S slash and then the number. So I just type that into Google and this exact pant came up and I plugged the name, the style name of them into Poshmark and the sold comps were really good, like 30 to $40. And I think there were only a couple available with like 10 or 15 sold. So that's definitely what I look for. Again, these are a linen pant, which is right on season. They're in excellent condition. They are a size zero, which I would prefer them to be, you know, an extra large or so, but I mean, smaller sizes sell. There are smaller sizes out there. And this is the newer tack. So I definitely wanted to grab those. We have an anthropology dress. This is really pretty. It's Maeve. This is my first time using this ring light. So bear with me on kind of getting used to this. And I definitely don't pick up all pieces from this sub brand in particular from anthropology, but I absolutely loved the print on this. It's kind of a mixed bandana paisley print and the length is great. It's a midi length. 
it has pockets it's like a faux wrap front and it's just really you know pretty feminine again the seasonality is there and it is in excellent condition this is a size two Let's see if i can so yeah when i'm kind of paying up for items like this you know uh, seven dollars that might not seem like a lot or you know like I'm paying up but relative to my cost of goods which is typically closer to one to three dollars this is paying up in my book I like to stick to more substantial items like midi maxi dresses good materials linen silk cashmere angora etc and yeah I'm really just looking for specific marketability points that make the items worth that extra you know five six dollars next we have yet another piece from Maeve which again from anthropology and this has a novelty print to it which I'm definitely a sucker for it has these animals all over super super cute and it's a button-down shirt size zero not much to say about this we have a pair of Free People, a cargo style army green moto zip jeans. And these I would not have paid. Um, so the reason I grabbed these was because they were a red color, which red was the discount color of the day. So these were a little bit cheaper. So these were one of the items that brought down my cost of goods. And I think they should sell, you know, 20, $25, possibly 30 to 32 ish. Um, but they have a lot of details going on. And I think that kind of um, moto style is always gonna be trendy. There are people who just like this style in particular. They're a size 26. This is the back of them. Next, another exciting find. I think this was from the same person that donated the pants. Let me see. This is Reformation jeans, which I think the jeans line is maybe a little bit less expensive than just Reformation. I could be wrong on that though. It might just mean that it's more casual, but this is a scoop neck tank maxi dress. And once again, this is an amazing condition. It's a really soft kind of jersey, stretchy knit material. It does have pockets and yeah, it's just a great basic. You could wear like a denim jacket over this. Um, it's definitely a closet staple, which is something, which is another kind of thing that makes it a more substantial piece. Even though, you know, it does look super basic, it is essential. <laughs> I was gonna see if I could find the size. Okay, this is a size small. It's 90% tinsel and 10% spandex. So really great piece there. This is a little bit more of a fun, quirky piece. It is mod cloth. I love, love, love thrifting and selling mod cloth. It's really fun to just see what prints and cuts they come up with. So this is a little uh, umbrella printed skater skirt. How cute is this? We have been getting so much rain here in Houston. I think it's raining right now. So, I mean, this is perfect for, you know, those summer showers and it's actually new attacks, which is great. Let me see. Yeah, new attacks. So you can't, can't get much better than that. It's a size medium and it is fully lined. It does not have pockets, but that's okay. Super cute nonetheless. Some more anthro, a Kimmy and Kin. This is a one size and it's like this kind of open knit cardigan, open cardigan, very boho. And this is a very versatile piece. You know, you could wear this over a dress or you could wear it over denim shorts with a little tank top. Um, you could just really throw this on with anything. It's a great neutral color. Again, season is perfect. And it's in excellent condition. And the fact that it's a one size means, you know, that it will cater to a larger pool of people. 
Next we have Zara Trafalic, size large. Another novelty print. How precious is this top? So it's buttoned down and it's like a pinstripe with this succulent slash cactus print throughout. I just thought this was adorable. And again, I love the novelty prints. They sell so well. And also it's a size large. It's also in like a very trendy kind of cut with this like boxy boyfriend style button down. And our last piece from Tuesday is a pair of new with tags, Beta Brand trousers. And if you guys are unfamiliar with Beta Brand, it is an excellent brand to thrift and resell. It holds its resale value extremely well. It is probably one of those brands, I would say Beta Brand, Everlane, Reformation, there's just a few brands out there that I will pick up regardless of style. The condition has to be there, but other than that, I will pick it up no matter what it is, just because it, people really like it, it's really popular, and all of their pieces are very high quality. So, Beta Brand is known for having really comfortable workwear. These are like a yoga pant, but in a trouser cut, and these are a size small. So yeah, very happy to find these new with tags. I think they should sell extremely well. And that is it for the thrift haul and this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know, I think the last time I was filming, I was talking about the Thread Up Assorted Brands video. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that video. And also feel free to let me know how you guys are liking these more kind of laid back style videos more casual vlogging style. They're really fun for me because I can just kind of pick up the camera and not have to, you know, carve out a specific time to sit down and do a thrift haul. I've been enjoying it. It's really fun for me to just, you know, kind of free flow a little bit and have a little bit more kind of creativity and openness with it. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see y'all soon. Bye.